Hi everyone, this is Caitlin Halbert, and I'm from Christianity Care in Delaware. I'm pleased to give the talk today on Roux-en-Y Gastric Bypass, Optimal Intestinal Limb Length. These are my disclosures. I have nothing to disclose, but I would like to take a minute to thank the session chairs for inviting me to give this talk today in this great Devils in the Details session. So let's begin. So first, let me go over what we're gonna be talking about in the next 10 minutes. This could be a two hour talk, but we're gonna break it down in 10 minutes. So we're gonna first start off by talking about some definitions. We're gonna go over bypass limbs and what they each mean. We're gonna talk about small bowel length, the definition and what that actually means. Briefly touch on common channel limb length and then talk about accuracy at the end, a little fun topic. So a little caveat before we get started. So first of all, this is very controversial and there is absolutely no guideline or consensus statement right now about limb length, just some general accepted terms and ranges. Um, so I'm gonna give you some estimates and I'm going to really stick to the systematic reviews and meta-analyses that are out there. There's some great ones that have come out in the last couple of years that really tie up and wrap up a lot of the studies that have been published over the last several decades. But I'm gonna stay within the realm of gastric bypass surgery. There's a lot of new data that's coming out with DS, things like that, but we are really gonna stay within the gastric bypass realm today. So let's start by talking definitions. Okay, so the standard gastric bypass is otherwise known as the proximal gastric bypass. And that is when the roux limb is measured out, the biliopancreatic limb is measured out, and the common channel is whatever happens to be left over and can be quite variable. This is in contrast to the distal gastric bypass. This is when you measure back from the ileocecal valve, creating a fixed common channel length and then the rest of the small bowel gets distributed into the BP limb and the roux limb, which one takes a little bit more will depend on the type of distal gastric bypass one is performing. Now, going into that in more detail, that's a whole other talk, so we'll save that for later. You can see contrasting these two different bypasses here in the two images, A being the proximal, B being the distal. You can see the distal has a much longer Roux limb and BP limb with a much more distal JJ anastomosis. Now, distal gastric bypass should not be confused with distalization. Distalization is the transposition of that roux limb more distally into the small bowel, creating a short and fixed common channel length that will also thereby elongate the BP limb. So that's what we're not talking about here. So let's break down each of the limbs here that make up the gastric bypass. So first is the roux limb, otherwise known as the alimentary limb, abbreviate the AL. Um, so this classically has a length of 100 to 150 centimeters. Over 90% of bariatric surgeons use this classic length. This is what we find in the textbooks when it's mentioned. This does retain some absorptive capacity, which is important when we're discussing which limb to make longer. Um, there are different defining lengths for the roux limb. Of course, we think of our standard that we just mentioned, but there's also a short and there's also a long. And what we consider that range to be short or long differs on every study in every textbook. And so there's really no uniformity to that terminology. Moving on, we have our biliopancreatic limb, our BP limb. This classically is somewhere between 50 and 75 centimeters. Now, because food is not passing through here, you have a complete loss of absorptive capacity. And finally, our common channel. Like I said, in a proximal gastric bypass, this can be quite variable. And what is important to keep in mind here is that it can be significantly variable from human to human. The average small bowel length in the average human could range anywhere from 300 to 900 centimeters. And in some extremes, it could go down below 200 or over 1,000 centimeters. And we don't measure the total limb length when we are doing a gastric bypass. So this in a proximal gastric bypass can be incredibly variable and we really don't know how much we're leaving behind in a patient. Something to keep in mind as we move along here. 
So let's look a little bit deeper into the rule limb. This is a great meta-analysis that came out just two years ago talking about different limb lengths in regards to the rule limb here. They set some definitions that they gathered up from the different studies and they gave some averages here. So their standard they put between 150, excuse me, 130 and 150 centimeters. The short is between 40 and 100, and the long was 175 to 250 centimeters. Now, I really liked the way that they defined this because they left gaps in between each of those ranges, and that really helps to define them and separate them out when looking at them under a study. So what did they find? Well, the effect on RU limb length on obesity with regards to BMI reduction and percent excess weight loss found that the standard length was better than the short length, the standard length was equal to the long length, and by algorithmic default, the long was better than the short. But interestingly, when they broke it down based on BMI, if the BMI was less than 50, the standard was equal to the short, so that 40 to 100 was equal to that 130 to 150, but when the patient's BMI was over 50, the standard was actually better than the short. Interesting. So what you can gather from that study is that for patients with a higher BMI, greater than 50, that you can crest up closer to that 130, 150 range and get some improved outcomes based on that limb length. Now let's combine the RU and the BP limbs together. This is also called the small bowel length, also called the total small bowel length, or TSBL. Classically, this limb length is defined between 130 to 200 centimeters. A short small bowel length would be less than 130 centimeters. The ideal proportion of small bowel that gets divided between the RU limb and the BP limb has not yet been defined. There are some great studies out there that are showing different percentages, but there's no head-to-head -head studies that are really looking at one proportion versus another in the same program by the same surgeons. It's kind of interesting. We just don't have this definitive answer yet, but we know that up to 200 centimeters is really ideal for these patients. Reason being, so there's some lessons learned from our distal gastric bypass studies that are out there. Now we know that if a common limb length is below 100 centimeters, that can lead a patient to develop severe protein and calorie deficiencies, as well as symptoms such as diarrhea. This can lead a patient back to the OR, needing transposition of their limbs to eliminate that malabsorption, and even death. We also learned that if the small bowel length, which remember is the RU limb and the BP limb, if it gets above 200 centimeters, this puts a patient at risk for a short common channel, less than 100 centimeters. So we know that when we're talking about that small bowel length, 200 is really the max for those totals. Let's talk a little bit about accuracy. So how well are we actually measuring out these limb lengths? It is quite variable from surgeon to surgeon. Is the bowel at stretch? Is it under tension or no tension when it's being measured? Some surgeons will put a ruler in and measure it along the ruler. Some surgeons will put the entire string in, measure it out to the length that they want, and measure with that. And some people do the eyeball measurement, as you can see in this video, and usually that's based on an instrument diameter, like the Babcock being two centimeters wide. And of course, if you ask any surgeon, they're gonna tell you their way is the right way, but there is absolutely zero research that's saying that this is the definitive answer, because even questioning whether the bowel is appropriately measured with and without anesthesia is still up for debate laparoscopic versus open, still up for debate. We really don't know the most accurate way to measure bowel, and therefore there's so many different variations on how to do that. But I can give every surgeon some guidance here. I think it's best to leave room for errors, and what I mean by that is to work within ranges of bowel lengths. So I've given you today not specific lengths, but ranges for every single length that we've talked about. And I think that's a safer way to make sure that you're really kind of guesstimating the limb length, but staying within very safe parameters.
So let's draw some conclusions about what we just talked about. There are optimal ranges instead of optimal limb lengths that we discussed. For the Rue limb, it's between 100 and 150 centimeters. The longer Rue limbs are really best reserved for patients with a BMI over 50. And our small bowel length, or our Rue limb and BP limbs combined, should range somewhere between 130 and 200 centimeters. Additionally, should we really be looking at limb lengths at all? Is this more of a proportion of the overall small bowel of a patient? And this goes back to the fact that there is so much variability in that small bowel length. This is still up for debate and will probably be that way for years to come. But finally, the one point I really want to drive home is that our standardization of terms and definitions is really suboptimal at this time. If you look across all the studies that are out there, they're using different terms and definitions, which makes gathering up that data into large meta-analyses and systematic reviews very difficult. I think that if we come together and can really create some good terms and definitions that we all agree on, I think the research moving forward in this very hot topic would be so much more robust. I want to thank everyone for their time and attention. It was really a pleasure to give such a fun and fascinating talk today. Of course, this could have been, like I said, a two-hour talk, but we squeezed it down into 10 minutes. If you have any questions on this topic, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much, and take care.